An animal rights group is creating a do not adopt registry of animal abusers after a decade of asking state governments to do so, but not all animal welfare societies are on board. The Animal Legal Defense Fund hopes the database will alert adoption centers of convicted animal abusers. Chris Green is the Director of Legislative Affairs for the Defense Fund and joins us via Skype. Chris, thank you so much for being on our Rise America. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Debbie. Let's start with just the nuts and bolts. Tell me how, what this registry is and how, it, how you hope it will work. Well, basically, several states have tried to pass registries that would be sort of statewide standalone systems that would register anyone convicted of an animal abuse crime. Um, but those bills had run into trouble. Uh, usually you're asking some state agency to pay to do something they don't want to do. And after a while, as you mentioned, 25 states have tried these and it hasn't been successful. ALDF decided to just bypass that and create our own national system whereby we then would just ask states to, rather than asking them to create this whole thing out of broad cloth, we'd simply ask them to opt in to an existing system. Um, and what that system would do would compile all animal abuse convictions, uh, kind of jurisdiction by jurisdiction as we get them, and then allow shelters, rescues, breeders, and pet stores to log in to this site and do a quick check on somebody to see if they've been convicted of an animal abuse crime. Uh, the whole fundamental purpose here is to prevent convicted abusers from acquiring additional uh, victims to, to, to harm. And um, a lot of most shelters have their own sort of do not adopt lists that are much less formal and are passed around among them all and uh, are, have not as quite as strict requirements. Uh, our database would only include uh, convictions that we get from official sources. So there would be no sort of hearsay as it occurs with several other the existing do not adopt lists that get passed around. You know, Chris, as an animal lover and I'm a veterinarian, I understand intuitively uh, what the intent of this uh, list is. However, you have uh, received some criticism, if not opposition, from animal welfare organizations, not the least of which is the Humane Society of the United States. We asked them for a statement. This is what they had to say. They said, animal cruelty, like other crimes, must be reported classified and analyzed in a comprehensive manner that results in swift, efficient enforcement of the law and the general improvement of society. It is not clear that the current round of proposals to create public registry databases would materially advance these goals. I have a couple of questions. I want to be more specific with the second one, but this one, are you surprised by the pushback that you're getting from uh, some of the animal advocate world? Not really. Uh, actually, interestingly, HSUS originally supported the registry idea. They used to have a couple websites devoted to it, but um, they since changed their position. And I think that was primarily due to it being considered a traditional sort of sex offender type registry where there would be this gallery of photographs that one could scroll through or search by neighborhood. And this is nothing to do with that. This is a, a system that's only searchable by name and birth date and will not have anyone's personal private home addresses or anything like that on there. Um, so it's, it is kind of surprising that, I mean, the, the statement you just read to me just said, well, it might not be any good, so why bother? Well, there's a lot of people who think it is worth bothering. A lot of shelters out there saying they would desperately need something like this. And exactly as the quote said from HSUS, there currently is no uh, centralized repository that compiles all of these animal abuse convictions. So we don't really know how many there are. It's impossible to compare jurisdictions to each other to see who's doing better than another or worse than another as far as you know, prosecuting and taking animal cruelty seriously. So that's another great ancillary benefit besides the direct quantifiable impact on animal welfare by prohibiting animals from being adopted by these people. Uh, you also have the ancillary benefit of being a able to compile all these convictions across jurisdictions. Let me ask you, just sort of give us a report card of where, of where we are in this country on animal abuse. Is What's the trend now? Do you see a increase, a decrease, or a status quo? Well, again, it's almost impossible for anyone to answer that question because there is no centralized repository of this, of, of this information. Uh, even the, the FBI's UCR system uh, doesn't completely and, and specifically track animal abuse crimes. So uh, it, it's, it's very hard for anyone to answer that. But what we have seen is that there is a greater public attention to this issue. And that's reflected in the fact that now 49 states treat animal cruelty as a felony. I think just 18 years ago, there were only seven states that treated it that way. So it just shows you in a matter of you know less than 20 years, 
we've had 40 plus states, uh, legislatures take action in response to their public response, uh, to public uh, sentiment on this issue. All right, we'll have to leave it right there. Chris Green, thank you so much for coming on. We do appreciate it. Thanks so much, Debbie. Bye-bye. And this is Arise America.